Hi, today I want to share with you a practice that I really enjoy and I find very helpful. I'm going to do part of the practice with you. It's called the Nine Lines of Movement and it was developed by Lulu Swaggard, who was a professor, teacher at Juilliard School of Dance and one of the early innovators that helped us to understand how to align the body property properly through movement and today we're going to do three of those nine lines of movement it's also helpful in just stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system and helping to calm us and center us and get us into our bodies um, and release stress which a lot of us might be feeling at this time so we're going to start in what's called constructive rest pose and I'll show you what that looks like. So you're going to come and lie on your back, like so. And your knees are going to be together, and your feet are going to be wide out like this. And then the top of your body is going to be laying like so. And you'll cross your arms over your chest. It doesn't matter which one is on top but you're laying in this position called constructive rest, which I, it's, I've heard said that 10 minutes in this position is worth an hour of sleep in terms of the impact that it has on your body. And this position is where the most muscles in the body are in a rested position, where they're not having to work, just holding themselves in gravity. So from here, we're going to lie and just take a couple of breaths and feel your body dropping into the floor and the weight of your body against the floor, particularly the bony parts of your body that are in contact. So your heels and the balls of your feet and your sacrum and then your mid thoracic, the back of your ribs and then the back of your skull. So just let that make more contact with the ground. Take one more deep breath. And then from here, I want you to visualize your second toe and a line from your second toe coming up the front of your shin to the center of your knee. So align directly from the second toe up to the knee. And just get a sense of what that looks like, but also from the inside what that feels like. Tracing that line from the second toe up to your knee right in the center. Then from there, you'll again focus on the center of your knee now, if you have a tendency to have your, like I do, my um, thighs tend to roll in in this direction. Other people's thighs tend to roll out in that direction. If you know what direction your thighs roll, um, when I, since my knees roll in, in thinking about the center of my knee, I just allow the imagination, the possibility of my thighs kind of rolling out in the sockets, out towards the outside. And you do the opposite if you have the opposite pattern. And then from there, you're just imagining the center of your knee and a line coming all the way down to the center and front of your hip. I like to think about this image of that line being wet sand, a line of wet sand coming all the way down to here. And when it drops into the hip crease, that the weight of that wet sand makes the crease in that hip deepen and gives weight into the pelvis. So from the center of the knees down into the crease of the hip, right at the center. And then the third line, you wanna think about your sacrum underneath here and the back of the pelvis coming out from the sacrum and rounding around to about here. So flattening across the back and coming through here to the middle seam of the hip, nice and flat across the back and 
the sacrum and the pelvis. So feeling that widening in the back. Good. So there you go. You can spend as much or little time doing that as possible. You can just think about one line um, of each of those from the toe to the knee, the knee to the pelvis, and then across the back of the pelvis. Or you can spend several minutes um, focusing on each line. And I'll do another installment for the next three lines. Okay, I hope you're well.